In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create fillets. So you can see in my view here, I've got four different rectangles and this backwards looking C shape. And I'm going to use these to demonstrate how you can create fillets in the software. So first things first, we need to come over to the fillet tool, which is under the edit objects part of the drawing tab. So you can see we've got a couple of different options here. So we've got our types of fillet and we've got the fillet slash tool radius. So the actual radius will be the radius for the type of fillet we'd like to use. So you can see a normal fillet type is the first one here. So let's have a look at how this works. So you'll notice my cursor has now changed where it has a plus icon with a fillet and either a check or a cross next to it. So if I click here in the corner, you can see I can create a normal fillet but you can see I can also get rid of that fillet when it turns to a cross icon. I can delete that and get rid of it. Now, if I change the radius to be a little bit bigger, 0.25, I'll try in this corner, you can see it changes how that fillet looks. And on the inside, you can put it here and here. Now, typically you would use these for design purposes, not really for editing a slot for fitting purposes. That's where our dog bone fillet comes in. And as you can see here, it says these fillets are used for creating clearance in an internal corners to allow slotted pieces to fit together. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So if I pop one in the corner there, you can see it's put in the radius of 0.25. And you can see when the check mark pops up, I can create a fillet in each one of these corners. And as before, I can remove them when the cross icon or X icon appears there as well. Now this is, as I just said, useful for when you have a fitting. So let's say you're making something with slots and you need to slot something in. Dog, uh, dog bone fillets are a great idea to use in that scenario. One key thing to note here though, is that this option should not be used if the slot width and the tool are similar in size. So with that said, let's move on to the next one, which is a T-bone fillet. So the T-bone fillet, this creates a circular cutout style of fillet that the circles will be created with the radius specified. So this option should be used if the slot width and the tool are similar in size. So the slot can grow out to the side to ensure that there is space for them to fit. So let's have a look at what this looks like. So if I come over to the corner here and click that, you can see it adds our slot in. Now it depends on what part of the corner you hover your mouse over to see where that T-bin will be. So for example, if I put it on the top side, it puts it on the top side. If I put it on this side, on the left, it puts it on the left side. Let's have a look at what that looks like on our example here from earlier. So let's go back to our normal fillet to get rid of these normal fillets. And go back to our T-bone and we can see if I put one this side, one this side, we've made our T-bone fillet. And then finally you can see we've got plas knife or drag knife fillets. So what do these look like? Let's pop one on the corner and you can see what these look like now. Because with a plasma or a drag knife, you don't have a spinning spindle, you need the knife to be able to do a turn. So these fillets allow the knife to follow this vector, go around, make the turn in the corner so you get a nice, clean, sharp corner, as opposed to trying to turn here, in which case I'd have to try and turn the corner and it can make a bit of a mess of your corners with that. So this is a really good idea to use a with a plasma or drag knife so you can get a nice smooth turn as it rounds the corner so you can get a nice clean sharp cut. Now one final thing to note is that when removing fillets the software does not store what kind of geometry the fillet was created from. It always defaults to using straight lines in order to return the fillet to a sharp corner. As such if the fillet is across multiple spans or derived from arcs or bezier curves then it will not go back to its original state and instead will remove the radius and extend two straight lines to the new corner. So you can see here, if I take my T-bone for example and I click off this, it always goes back to a straight corner. Same with the other types of fillet as well. But that concludes our video on the fillet tool and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.